The car had its annual MOT and only failed on the two rear bushes, which were £48 a pair plus £39.90 for the bush removal install sleeve kit. The mileage was 126,000 miles and this was another year where the cost of passing the MOT was under £150, including the MOT test fee. Other than a trolley jack, you will need the following main items for this job. A pair of new rear bushes, a specific bush installation tool, around £39.90, 16, 17, 18 and 21mm sockets, a torque wrench able to torque to 110 Nm, I found a bottle jack to come in handy, and dare I say an air impact wrench. So here's the bushes. Um, and we do get some instructions because they are slightly different um, as you can see one seems to have like an oval hole and one is a straight hole so similar on the top but that one on the right is definitely oval and the one on the left is a straight hole As you can see there. So that one's round with like two slots. And that one is oval. So we must make sure we put these in correctly. The instructions do say that the bush remover set is not enough to remove the used bush by itself as the screw in the set can only take a torque range from 80 to 100 newton meters. According to tests the suspension bolts are often corroded into the center of the bush because of different chemical material reactions. So you must not exceed 100 newton meters on the force screw. You can pause this part if you wish to read those instructions. The set basically comprises three main parts. You have this, which is like the main sleeve. You have this one for pushing the old bush out. And then you have this one for reinstalling the new bush. And obviously you have the main screw used to force them together. And the main screw must be greased. Use plenty of grease on this. Oil isn't sufficient. It has to be grease. We will need to loosen the wheel nuts on both rear wheels as we are replacing both bushes and replacing either bush requires the rear of the car to be lifted completely off the ground. The rear axle will need freedom to move around to give us access to the bushes. Use a 17mm socket on a breaker bar. I'm going to chock the front wheels for safety reasons. I can then loosen the wheel nuts while the vehicle is still on the ground. If you haven't already done so, we also need to release the handbrake. If it's the electronic one, the procedure is as follows. Now to release the handbrake, we need to make sure the ignition's on, and then we pull the lever and push the button at the same time. And now it's released, you get a warning on the dashboard, parking brake is off, and that then turns red. There's also a manual release handle in the centre console underneath the plastic flap. We can now jack the rear of the car up and ideally place on axle stands for extra safety. So you might need to jack each side of the car up bit by bit until you've got both wheels completely off the ground and then secure the car with axle stands. So I'm going to start with the near side bush so I'll remove the near side rear wheel Now 
Using axle stands also enables the jack to be free to push the rear suspension up and down as required. With the rear axle resting nicely on the trolley jack, we can remove the suspension strut using an 18mm socket. This was very tight and it might be worth spraying some penetrating fluid onto the bolt first. So using an 18mm socket and a breaker bar, try and remove the suspension strut bolt. Um, you will need to be quite liberal I think with penetrating fluid on this. It certainly was quite seized in. In the end I resorted to my big Clark um, ratchet and that did seem to do the job. I think this Clark ratchet is starting to become one of my favourite tools. Once the bolt does come out, it's advisable to clean the threads on that and re-oil it before putting it back in. We now need to remove the axle mounting plate. The plate is held in position with three 16mm headed bolts and the 16mm headed bolt that passes through the bush. It's wise to clean the area around the plate and mark its position with a marker pen or paint as this plate affects wheel alignment. So this is the main bolt that goes through the bush itself. Um, it's quite a long one. But no problems with this one. This one came out quite nicely. As this bolt comes out, you'll see the brake lines do drop. You may need to unclip the brake lines from the plastic um, holder, which is just further back on the car. Um, just to allow the pipes to flex a little bit more when you remove the actual axle itself. So like I mentioned earlier, you should really uh, mark the position of this bracket before removing all the bolts. Because um, it does affect wheel alignment. Um, so if you don't actually mark it, Technically, you should actually have the wheel alignment checked afterwards once you've done these two bushes. This bolt has a lot of thread open to the elements and was heavily rusted on the other side. It required a lot of penetrating fluid and in the end I resorted to an impact wrench. So this bolt proved to be a little bit testing. Um, it was heavily corroded on the other side and there's quite a length of open thread up there. Um, so really you need to try and get as much of the debris off that, like the rust and that. Um, but in the end I resorted to an impact wrench and just kept going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards until I could sort of loosen it. So here we go using the impact. So gradually just bringing it down a little bit at a time then winding it back in again because obviously I didn't want the thread to get damaged because um, that would give me another job then to do to try and sort that out. So just keep winding it back and forwards and then eventually it came out. Also apply plenty of lubricants when you can see the thread so at least if it's lubricated, as the bolt goes back up, it takes the lubricant with it and keeps that nut lubricated. Since I have the impact wrench to hand, I'll use it on this last bolt. It does make life a bit quicker. The axle is now free to move down and backwards. Don't move the axle until you have unclipped the ABS sensor wiring though. So the ABS cable just lifts out at one part and then this part just pops down and it comes out there. Now you can move the axle back and it's on those flexible pipes but you've only got very limited amount of movement so you can't really push it too far. So 
So this side, which is the near side, has is the bush with the oval hole, as you can see there. So that's the new one ready to go in. So we've just got to push the other one out now. Here's the bush coloured in yellow, so you can see how it fits into the actual rear axle frame. Now comes the removal of the bush with the newly bought sleeve tool. This sleeve kit needed 21mm spanners and sockets. It's worth spraying the bush and around the edge of it very liberally with some penetrating fluid. This should help with the removal of the bush and to ease the load on the tool. I then marked the position of the lugs on the old bush in relation to the axle so that I could make sure that the new bush was in the right place. Right, so the instructions say that we must grease the screw and nut, not oil, to close the gap on the thread between the screw and the nut for higher torque. Final tightening and removal of the bush. I used a torque wrench set to 80 and then 100 Nm to ensure I didn't overstress the bolt thread. As the instruction said, it's not designed to take more than 100 Nm. So I used a 21mm spanner on the bottom, like so, and then a 21mm socket on the top. Once it got too hard to tighten with the small ratchet, I then changed to the torque wrench, which I originally set at 80 newton meters, and then once that clicked at 80, I then adjusted it to 100. And then from that point, I knew that I mustn't really go over the click of the 100 newton meters for fear of damaging the thread. But thankfully, it came out not too bad. So the part that's used to push the actual old bush out is, is similar because there's two of them that are actually quite similar to each other other than the main sleeve. Um, it's like a stubby one and one way of telling the difference is, is that the main sleeve, which is the large one, is 88 millimeters in diameter and the one for pushing out the old bush is 77 millimeters in diameter and then the one that pushes in the new bush is 80 millimeters in diameter so this piece that I've just removed then is only 77 millimeters in diameter so in theory that would go straight through the axle and come out the top with the old bush still attached I struggled there and actually took the nut back off the thread but in theory it should have just come straight out in one piece as you can see, this is the oval side. So I'm working on the passenger side of the vehicle and it's oval on this side. It 
it's then worth cleaning this with a wire brush um, to ensure that when you put the new bush in there's no grit or stones or anything like that that could actually stop it going in smoothly as you'd like it to. Now that the part's off the car, I'll show you how the sleeve tool actually works. So there's the bush inside the sleeve, and that's the narrow diameter one, as you can see, easily slides inside that, and that's the one for pushing it out. Now here's the installing one. So as you can see, it's slightly different, and that one is the one that goes on the top, you see, like that, and then pushes it downwards and the sleeve will then be at the bottom. Now to install the new bush. So I've pre-greased the new bush um, on the rubber area to help that slide in. And then we'll be using the third part of the kit that we haven't used. And then we shall push the bush down and we'll have the big sleeve underneath. So also checking that the lugs on the top line up with my paint marks because that pad there sits underneath the body of the car. And this is the install one which is about 80 millimeters in diameter and then sits on the top and it sort of jumps over those two lugs and then rests on the shoulder of the black area. I was struggling a little bit here, um, the torsion bar did seem to be exactly where I needed the sleeve to go. Um, so yeah, it did take a little bit of working out there, as you can see the torsion bar is just there. So it's got to be moved out of the way. Eventually managed to find some compromise where I could get the sleeve into position um, so we could install this new bush. So now we're ready to actually tighten up the, the bolt and to push this new bush into position. Obviously make sure the lugs are in the correct alignment because you don't really want to push it back out again to adjust it. So now I've gone on to the torque wrench with a setting of 80 newton metres. So there's our 80 newton meter click. So I'm now going to set it to 100, so I know that's the maximum I can really go to. Okay, so we'll leave it there. That's 100 newton meters. So presumably that's in as far as it can go. Now the new bush is home, we can reattach the rear axle by installing the mounting plate with the three 16 millimeter bolts and the long 16 millimeter bolt that goes through the bush itself. This can be a fiddly job now. We need to replace this mounting bracket um, and at the same time we've got to put all the four bolts back through. Now we sort of need to have the axle <coughs> aligned so that it's at least level with the back of the car. 
so we can sort of push that in um, because the hole's got to line up through that bush and into the bottom of the car and you don't want to cross thread it. So it is a little bit patience here um, but it tends to be that if you have all four bolts in and they're loose and then you can gradually bring them all tighter all at the same time. As you can see, you can see the mounting bracket there at the bottom of the car, just underneath. Um, so really the axle needs to be pushed up just to straighten that plate so that it's level. Um, so that the bolt goes in at straight and doesn't go in at an angle. The Haynes manual has it down as axle mounting bolt 80 newton meters. So I presume that applies to all four. So that's what I'll do. Now it does advise in the Haynes manual that on completion, it may be advisable to have the rear wheel alignment checked by a Renault dealer. So presumably the wheels could be slightly out after this. And then I popped the two rigid brake lines back into their plastic clips on the underside of the car. And also re-clipped the ABS sensor wiring back on. So one clips in on the plastic clip like that and the other one just pushes in with like a rubber grommet. and reattach the suspension strut using the 18mm socket and torque to 110 newton meters. So you may need to use the trolley jack just to move the suspension up and down when getting this bolt realigned back in. And then once it's in, we torque this to 110 newton meters. And there's our click. Replace the road wheel using a 17mm socket and then temporarily activate the rear handbrake so you can tighten the wheel nuts to 110 newton meters. I now carried on with the offside bush, which will be part B to this set. Thank you for watching and hope this helped some home mechanics out.